if you have an irregular and abnormal cycle, you can't just say, I'm sure it's my PCOS or presume that it's normal. We actually do need to check hormones in this circumstance because we need to rule out thyroid or prolactin problems. We also see those cycle changes as your egg count drops with reproductive aging. So as we said, one of the first signs is actually a shorter follicular phase. Well, we do have a blood test to help us interpret this, and that blood test is called AMH or anti-mullerian hormone. Now, AMH is made from the cells that surround each follicle. And remember, because you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have, all these eggs live inside that vault, inside your ovary, and they all make AMH. So when you have more eggs remaining, you'll have a higher AMH, and when you have fewer eggs remaining, you have a lower AMH. In reality, each of the eggs that come out of the vault in a given month, that corresponds to how many eggs you have remaining. So I always like to say that vault keeper is trying to keep the vault at perfect capacity. If it's too crowded, because you have a lot of eggs, it's sending out more that month. And if it's starting to get empty and it wants to keep eggs behind, then it's actually sending out fewer per month. So we can evaluate those eggs outside the vault, and that's a surrogate marker for how many eggs you have inside. Well, AMH is made from those eggs that are outside the vault or getting to the surface of the vault, and so it does fluctuate with time, but there are norms based on your age for where that level should be. And so if you have a really high level, a low level, that might relate to how your period is functioning. So for example, women with PCOS who have a really high egg count they actually, I like to say that the FSH from the brain, it gets diluted. And so no follicle is getting a strong enough signal. And that's why we often see delayed or long cycles in women with PCOS. That's the opposite problem from when women have a low egg count. Because we said in the low egg count scenario, each egg is getting a stronger signal of FSH and shortening our cycles. So your cycle and how often it's coming and its pattern is actually giving us a lot of information. And then if you're really having very few periods or you're not having a period at all, it's also really important to check FSH, LH, and estrogen. Because we're trying to say, is the problem at the brain? Is it at the hypothalamus? Or is it at the ovaries? And we don't know that answer without checking blood work. So if you're not having a period, my general panel for what I'm checking first is going to be an FSH, an LH, an estradiol, which is the type of estrogen made from your ovaries. I'm also then going to check a thyroid hormone, so a TSH, a prolactin, and an AMH blood test. So that's gonna be my initial panel if we're trying to get to the bottom of why you might be having some period abnormalities. Now, if you have some high androgen signs, androgens are male hormones, so things like hair on your face or increased acne or male pattern baldness, then we might wanna be investigating some of those androgen production. And this is gonna be testosterone from the ovaries or DHEA, which is made from the adrenal glands. I don't check these in everybody, but there might be a circumstance where that's the right thing to check. There's actually an extra hormone called 17-hydroxyprogesterone, which is very specific, but it's really important because it can diagnose something called congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which is an adrenal gland problem of making too many androgens that presents very similarly to PCOS, but it's much more severe. So those high androgen patients, testosterone, DHEAS, and I'm checking a 17-hydroxyprogesterone, I'm adding those on. And then one hormone that deserves some attention is cortisol. Cortisol is that stress hormone and it talks back to the brain. The truth is that random cortisol levels are not that informative, so I don't check them. But I always say my best gauge if a stress is impacting your body is you. You know how you're feeling. You know if you're worn down. You know if you're dealing with a lot of pressure. But remember that the brain is wired to interpret cortisol and that stress hormone as very problematic. Cortisol is in fact inflammatory to the body, whereas estrogen is anti-inflammatory. So this inflammatory hormone cortisol comes into your body and your brain doesn't know if you're being starved, if there's a war, if your body's struggling with a chronic illness, it just gets this alert signal from cortisol. And I always like to say this is interference coming back to air traffic control. It's like static interference right there that's making the brain either harder to send out the hormones that it needs, harder to interpret what it needs to send out, and it also can shut down air traffic control altogether. So your world, your life, your stress levels, they do play a role in how all of your hormones function, as does your lifestyle. Inflammation itself 
is a huge player when it comes to your reproductive hormones because inflammation is toxic to our reproductive hormones on multiple different levels. But for the easiest way to describe it is that we've got evidence that inflammation is telling our brain that we are in a stress state. And that inflammation, those environmental toxins, the food that we eat, the things that we put in our body, really the choices that we make every day, all of those choices can add up and they can have a huge impact on your reproductive hormone function and your health. And a huge focus of this show is going to be talking to you about my formula for what you can do to put yourself in a better position to take charge of all of those factors. A couple of questions that I get asked all the time that I think are really important for us to address. Number one is that what are balanced hormones? So I always say, Having a regular predictable cycle is a great sign that some of your key hormones are balanced, but so is feeling your best. When progesterone is being made, you're gonna notice that your body is progestating, meaning progesterone is supposed to want you slow down, eat more, store calories, sleep, and get ready to gestate a baby. That is in contrast to the high energy, high concentration phase of the follicular phase when estrogen is high. These hormones control your mood, your energy, your food intake, your metabolism, your temperature sensation. And so if you are having regular predictable cycles, you're gonna notice that you feel different in your follicular phase and your luteal phase. So if you feel worse right before your period comes, that doesn't mean your hormones are imbalanced. It actually might mean they're perfectly balanced. But if you are noticing a huge change from baseline, especially if you're gaining weight, you're having fatigue, you can't concentrate, and you can't eat food, you have GI distress, you're having skin issues, these are all huge clues that something else might be going on in your body. I think it's really important to know that no single hormone test may give you the answer even though your hormones may be involved. This is why knowing your story is so important when you go see a doctor. I know that patients tend to get dismissed and I don't want that to happen to you. So you need to really take time and think about what has changed? How do I feel now? What do I need to tell my doctor? And what's the timeline where this happened? The first question your doctor is gonna say is, what brings you in today? There is no reason to go into this appointment unprepared. So if you're gonna sit down for that appointment, I want you to say, used to be like this, but now I'm experiencing X, Y, Z for this long. This is what makes it better or worse because you're the only one living in your body and you're the one who can advocate for yourself. Another top question I get is, what is estrogen dominance? And I think this is a really important one because we see on social media a lot of people talking about estrogen dominance. And in fact, I recently had a patient who went and had blood work drawn and her estrogen levels were high and her progesterone levels were low. And she was diagnosed by her hormone specialist as having estrogen dominance and told that her progesterone was too low to get pregnant and she was put on a daily progesterone supplement. She was actually put on progesterone in two different doses in the follicular and the luteal phase. But progesterone opens and closes the implantation window. It is only made in that luteal phase. And essentially, my patient was put on birth control for six months, despite the fact that she was trying to get pregnant, all under this false diagnosis of estrogen dominance. And I think this is why knowing what is normal is so important so that this doesn't happen to you. The follicular phase of your cycle is an estrogen dominant time, meaning you should have high estrogen and you should have zero progesterone being made. So estrogen dominance to me, most of the time, you are just being checked in the follicular phase. If you have PCOS, you might have a really long follicular phase and that might be part of the problem, but that doesn't mean that the answer is daily progesterone if you're trying to get pregnant. And again, remember there's no set progesterone level that's gonna tell you your progesterone is good. So even checking random labs in the luteal phase, some patients get put on progesterone in the wrong time and it can have huge consequence. Estrogen dominance might be a very normal follicular phase. It could also represent PCOS, but it's probably something that you do not need progesterone supplementation for. And if somebody's trying to get you on compounded hormones, please let that be a red flag and get a second opinion before you start a hormone that could hugely impact your reproductive health. Mm -hmm.